Okay, so I grew up in France, uh, in Vendée, which is a small place uh, in France near the Atlantic coast. And then I came to Paris when I was 17. I came to Paris to study at the conservatory in Paris for piano. Ah. That's, that's the reason why I came to Paris. And then, uh, and then I studied mathematics, uh, so I went to, uh, to do what we call in France maths sup, maths pay. Okay. It was in Henri IV, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lycée uh, just right there. <laughs> And uh, and then I went to uh, normal sup in physics, uh, in physics to study more physics. I was really into physics. And then I went to Stanford uh, to do um, virtual surgery. Uh, it was a joint project with NASA and Stanford. And so um, we were doing um, well. It was surgery in a virtual environment, so you can you make surgeries on uh, uh, on virtual hands, virtual. Uh, parts of the body and um, it was to train the surgeons and the surgeons could uh, be sent on uh, long space flight missions for 10 or 20 years and then they could train beforehand on our device uh, before uh, operating the, the, real, uh, the real person ah. so with better chances of success. That was the reason why we were doing this uh, virtual surgery thing. Um, and then uh, so I studied computer science uh, at Stanford uh, it, with a master's in computer science. Then I came back to France. I worked for a small uh, American company based in Paris, uh, which was named Kabira. Uh, I worked there for five years. I learned a lot uh, on uh, five different positions, from uh, customer support to sales, to uh, like coding or being a project manager. So I, I had several positions. It helped me understand how a uh, software company works. And then uh, I had the idea of blah blah car and then that's uh, that's how uh, then uh, I I had a job in the day and a job in the night after that <laughs> moment because I was working for uh, for my company and then uh, I was uh, uh, coding uh, on the project uh, at night and weekends and holidays and everything every single hour of the fine I, I would spend on it ah. and then I went to um, uh, because I had a very scientific background and uh, I realized that I needed to have a, a more uh, business background as well to uh, understand better how to launch a company. Because at the beginning, Blablacar was just a, a website, a project, and uh, it was not. It, it could not be a, a company uh, if. Um, well, I, I had to really understand how to launch a business, uh, otherwise the website would be dead. And so I went to INSEAD for a year, uh, doing a full-time MBA. So that was in 2007. And so I took Blablacar as a project to um, really study everything about entrepreneurship and uh, it was the example I used in all the classes. So all the projects I could find uh, were about Blablacar. So uh, like we had something like 30 classes and then 15 of them I've spent on, the, on the Blablacar, like uh, seeing how uh, all the angles of finance, uh, the startup, the, uh, the accounting, the uh, like partnerships, uh, well, all the course, all the classes we had were about blah blah car for me. At the end of the year, uh, at the time the, the project was named Commuter, and at the end of the year, all the students at INSEAD knew about the project because they had seen it in a class. <laughs> but I, at the end of the year, I had gathered like uh, 300 or 500 questions from everybody, and then I had to have answer about all of them, so it really strengthened the um, the project because uh, all the questions had been asked and I had to have answers for them to, to those questions if I wanted the business to work. The, uh, the idea came at uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas time. I had to go back to my home place, which is in Vendée. It's about 300 miles away from Paris. And I had to go back and all the trains were full. And so um, and I could only find one train which was at 5 a.m. and then I would have had to wake up at 3 a.m. To, to take it. And then I saw that thousands of people were driving alone in their cars and going back to my home place for Christmas. And then I could buy a seat to them for 20 or 30 euros instead of uh, this uh, stupid uh, 5 a.m. train at uh, 100 euros. Yeah. And, um, and that's when it started. And I, I didn't sleep for 72 hours. That's a true story. And uh, people would ask me, and then I say, yes, I didn't sleep for 72 hours. Because I had the idea, and then I said, but this does not exist. How come it does not exist? 
uh, how come um, like in other countries does it exist I couldn't really find well after uh, afterwards I found out that it, it uh, was uh, existing in, in uh, Germany for decades and people were doing that without internet with a, a structure on the in the train stations uh, they were doing ride sharing and um, uh, but in France and in the US, I couldn't really find a network for this. Uh, even though there are carpool lanes and the HOV lanes in the US, uh, where people can, uh, people who are two or three per vehicle, uh, can uh, have their special lane, and it goes faster. But then uh, there was no real network of uh, people sharing their cars for uh, on rides. So uh, and then um, then I began to to look for other solutions, to look for other um, projects which would have existed, and then, uh, and then it, the idea just uh, didn't leave me alone. Anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been working on it for years now. At the beginning, I did not realize uh, that uh, developing a website and then making a company out of it would uh, uh, would be such a change. Uh, well, the change is that at the beginning you're alone, and then before that you are at the company and work with other people. And then, uh, when you when you start your project and you have no more environment, you have no colleagues. Uh, well, I had so I started the project with a very good friend of mine, which is named Damien. And uh, so that's when we started. We were coding at the very beginning uh, on, on the project. And so um, I was very lucky to to be with Damien because uh, when you know when you, your moral is down or your moral is up, then the other is always in a counter cycle and then he, he can bring you back up if you're down and you can bring him back up if he's down. And so I think it's very important to be two uh, instead of one, at least. And uh, but then, yeah, uh, most of the time though, you, you work alone. I was working alone in my uh, living room with my cat and that's it. I mean, it was like, because Right after INSEAD in 2007, so at the beginning of 2008, I began to be full-time uh, for uh, BlaBlaCar and then uh, I had no office, of course, and uh, I was then alone full-time, uh, So, which meant that uh, during the day uh, and uh, all, almost all the time you're alone, you're working alone on your project, so you have to do everything, you have to code, you have to sell, you have to do the communication, you have to work on the product, uh, you have to to do uh, the customer service. You have to <laughs> so you, you really switch uh, from all the, the types of jobs. So I was lucky that my background could uh, help me in. Uh, uh, I knew how to code. I knew uh, some uh, some uh, concepts about business and how to develop it. And um, I had. Um, well, it's kind of easier as well for me to to talk to media or things like that. I discovered that I didn't know that, but then. Uh, it was a, it was a help as well, uh, and so uh, the the big change was that you you start from a, an environment where you have a lots of co lots of colleagues. Then I had a lot of um, other students uh, at INSEAD, and then you and then you work on it, and so that that was uh, that was tough for for a year, um, and then. Uh, well, then, then uh, there was uh, Francis, uh, whom we had uh, been working with for a year on a part-time basis, who quit his job and then he joined the company in, uh, in May or June uh, 2008. That must have been a big break, the first real... Yes, yes well, he was an associate, uh, so, uh, so then we were two full-time, Francis and me, and then we could really, really uh, go much faster, because uh, then Francis came to take over all the technical... Uh, angle of the platform, which was uh, the biggest uh, time-consuming part, um, and so it relieved me from the technical part, and then I could focus on the, on the other part. Um, yeah, and then uh, so the the biggest change then uh, it's when you get your first office. Uh, you get your first employee and first office. <laughs> so the first employee we had was uh, Laure and she arrived in January 2009 and our first office was in February 2009 which means that for a month uh, Law was coming to my place, I had to tidy all my living room and then we could have a, a real uh, kind of office uh, in, the, in the living room to work together and then, um, and then we had the office and then, uh, and, and then it really became a, 
we, we raised some uh, our first money in uh, June 2009. Uh, we raised uh, 600k, and then um, and then we continue to to have the company grow. Well, th there are several steps. It's hard to identify when is really a switching point. Uh, really, well, the beginning is a switching point. Uh, I did not realize I was really going into entrepreneurship uh, until a few uh, years down the road. I was like, wow, I have switched. I can never come back to being uh, an employee. Or what? It's, it's over. And so uh, I did not realize that at the beginning. And then I really realize now that I have found um, really my family, I would say. Uh, my family is the entrepreneurs, really. I really, uh, for, for years I have search for what I was uh, the best at. Uh, you know, I've tried many things from research to uh, being a, an employee in a company and to now uh, founding my own company and uh, really I, I'm, uh, it's kind of uh, weird because during the studies uh, I wasn't really told that uh, entrepreneurship was one of the possibilities. Uh, I discovered that after. So now it's beginning to change. I mean and, and uh, schools like HEC or uh, they um, uh, they encourage you mm -hmm. to launch your own company. Uh, in the schools I was at, like Norma Sup um, in France, uh, it's not um, uh, the, the option is really to go for research and uh, and uh, teaching, and uh, it's not for entrepreneurship usually, and. Um, and so, uh, well, it's normal because the school is meant for that, but uh, it was not really, it was a surprise for me to discover that in the end, after having done all these schools, I was made for entrepreneurship. Uh, and uh, I'm really happy now about that. Uh, so the, uh, the, the magic point is that uh, most of the time, um, VCs are also good advisors. So you get both. When you get good VCs and good um, good investors, you get both the advisors and the money at the same time. And so that's what we should be looking for. I mean, when I raised money for the first time, I could meet people with money, but which would be uh, uh, bad advisors, uh, bad advisors because they, they didn't really know the business and they, they had the uh, old-fashioned way of seeing uh, the business. And um, uh, and so. Yeah, uh, we, it took me uh, really a lot of time at the beginning to choose uh, the investors and the difficult part is that you need money, to, you need money, you know, to grow faster, especially when you're building a critical mass market just like what we've done, uh, because uh, until you reach the critical mass, you are, you are not into your business, you are into uh, building it and it's not working yet, so you, you can't get any money out of it, so at the beginning you have to... Um, uh, to, to really spend money. Uh, the VCs yeah. like uh, critical mass markets because they need money at the beginning. And you can't really bootstrap them uh, without money. So um, so then, uh, yes, the, it's been... Um, uh, before I raised money, I thought that uh, raising money was about getting money. And actually, I didn't realize the... Uh, added value of having uh, very clever and informed people around you uh, to help you not do mistakes, uh, to have the board basically. And so the board is really uh, something that helps uh, the entrepreneur. And so when I decided to raise money, it's, it's something I had not seen beforehand. Uh, I saw it was uh, just about uh, um, the, the, the investors taking a share in the company and then uh, having a board to control the company. Uh, well, even if it's, uh, it's part of the case, control doesn't mean that they impose things. It means that they help you in defining what's really important and what is not. And so uh, it helps the company. So it's a really good thing to accept people in the board uh, to, to drive with you. Um, the thing is, you have to choose them very well, very carefully. <laughs> that, that's the difficult part, and so that's why it takes time. It, it takes, uh, it can take six months, twelve months, two years, three years, four years. It can take a lot of time, and it, the reason is because you you are not actually only choosing money, you're choosing partners, 
it's just like choosing an associate. It takes time. And it's after a few months sometimes you realize that it's not the right associate. And then uh, you have to find someone else. And I think it's the same with the funds. The thing is that it's, uh, it's binding and then you, you can't really uh, make mistakes. If you make mistakes, I think it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a tough situation. Uh, so far we haven't made any mistakes. I'm really happy. <laughs> So today we're based in four countries, so it's in the UK, in France, uh, Spain and Italy. Uh, so we're named BlaBlaCar in uh, Spain, Italy and uh, UK, and we're named covoiturage.fr in France, it's historical. And so, yeah, I think it's an activity that can be developed everywhere, but it's, uh, it's also there are several metrics which make it possible or not. Um, and so, uh, for example, it does not really work in the US for now. Okay. Uh, there are many reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is economics, because uh, it's not interesting enough for now to, for people to share their cars, because uh, gas is cheaper than in France, uh, the insurance is cheaper, owning a car is cheaper, the freeways are not uh, tall, uh, Fair enough. tall highways. So there are a lot of reasons for the ride sharing not to be developed in the US for now. And so that's also our luck because usually in the, in the internet, you uh, most of the time you have a big American uh, company uh, which can come and grab your market. It's not the case for us. So we can really grow outside of France, in, uh, in Europe, and then probably uh, somewhere else. Uh, so uh, I, I, see, I think that today we have 2 million people uh, in, uh, in the network in Europe. It can grow... Um, well, by 2015, we should be 10 million, and then uh, and then it can grow up to, f f in Europe, I would say uh, something around uh, 30 to 50 million, I don't know yet, but uh, it can really become uh, quite big because there are so many people with cars, so many people looking for rides uh, all the time, uh, that uh, there are a lot of matching. Today, uh, today there are like 15,000 people uh, traveling every day with uh, blah blah car. So they pay online, and then uh, we take the commission, and then we give the money to the drivers. Right. It's in between 300 and 500 kilometers, so that's 200 to 350 miles. Mm -hmm. oh, the, the biggest learning is that if you that money is a bad product of a good product, you have to focus on doing a good product first, and then money will come. If you focus on money, you will just not have money. <laughs> So, uh, so we were convinced that somehow there would be a way to, uh, to get some money out of a good product and a good service. So our focus was really on making the best product for the activity we had targeted. So we are uh, ride sharers uh, ourselves, I mean we do ride sharing a lot. Um, I'm a passenger and then Francis is a driver and so we test the platform all the time and then all the team now there are 40 people. Uh, all of them do share rights, uh, and it's it's compulsory for us to really uh, understand what it's uh, what it's like and how it is to use your product. Um, and we are really lucky because we can try our product very easily. Yeah. And so we realize that uh, uh, when you when you try a product, when you try your own product, you are not the same person as when you conceive it. Yeah your mindset is totally different and it's, it's really useful to, to really transform yourself into a consumer of your own product. And so that's how we could improve the product all the time. Uh, the thing is, uh, well, it's a market which is um, by nature uh, a winner-takes-all market because everybody goes to the same place. Uh, because part of the value that you propose to your members is the number of ads. Uh, so it's part of the product. Part of the product is the quantity of ads that you offer. So um, uh, it means that um, uh, per country, I think there will be in the end, well, not in the end, but in 10 years, maybe, or 15 years, there will be only one network per country, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, because, uh, because there's such added value to uh, to being for, for the people to being in the biggest network yeah. and everybody goes to the same place um, but then it means that in all the countries it can be different actors 
Uh, and so for now, what we, what we witness is that in France and Germany, uh, those two countries are already taken. France is taken by uh, our by Blablacar, and uh, Germany is taken by another actor, which is German. Uh, all the other markets are not really taken yet, um, so that's why we are expanding fast. I would say that uh, maybe part of uh, part of the job is to really be able to work anytime, anywhere, on anything. Uh, if you see something and you say, "Well, I don't want to do that." I know it's useful, but I don't want to do it, then it will never work. Uh, you have to be able to do everything, uh, to learn to do everything. Even if it's not perfect, you have to get it done to like uh, the, the, the better you can. And so uh, that's the first thing, you have to be able to work on everything. And then you, also I think you have to have a, a good health, because um, uh, if you are not able to work 90 or 95 hours a week, uh, I'm not sure it can work, well, at least for, for me. And so working that much means that sometimes you work until 5 or 6 a.m. And then, and then you have to be careful, you don't work until 5 or 6 a.m. if you wake up at 7, because it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. But if you wake up, uh, if, if your next um, uh, appointment uh, or reunion is uh, at uh, 11, 10 or 11, it can work. So, uh, I would say no less than uh, three hours of sleep in the night. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, a rhythm I had for a long time was uh, sleeping 50 hours a week, which is good. Uh, but it's five hours per night during the week, and it's 12 hours per night during the weekend. And so you, you sleep five, 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 twelve, twelve. If you don't do that, you're not able to start again for the next week. <laughs> Always something you can do. Even if you're walking in the street, you you can have a phone call. Or if you're in the metro, you can uh, check your mail. And when you're at work, you can discuss with your colleagues. And uh, you can have uh, meetings. Um, so, the thing is, uh, and sometimes you have to really stop and think. This is maybe the most difficult part, where you have to say, okay, I have 156 six things to do before tonight. But I stop and I think, uh, and you, you think for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, it's it's uh, sometimes more useful. I would say um, you cannot become an entrepreneur if you're not passionate about what you're doing because uh, it's so much work that if the passion is not driving you you will never be able to work as much as needed uh, it's only the, the goal that motivates you uh, if you do well at, at least it's for, um, uh, for my personality I know that uh, there are several styles of entrepreneurs. Some people are entrepreneurs for the lifestyle. Some of those are for like uh, making history. Some of those uh, it's for money. Uh, so you can have your own motivation, but it, it better be strong because with all <laughs> with all the work that you have to do, if you don't have a strong motivation, uh, you will not finish it.